thank you very much. Uh, I, I was told that it wasn't absolutely necessary to speak today. And I must confess there was something quite appealing about just running back to my seat now. Um, and I'm aware that there was probably something quite appealing for you about that idea as well. But I, I wanted to just take a couple of minutes uh, to say thank you, really. Uh, I, this is a huge honor for me, and uh, as you can tell by my voice. Um, uh, I, I, I wanted, obviously, to say thank you to Martin for that incredibly flattering and generous uh, account. Uh, I wish he'd been that generous about my essay on the divine right of kings in Shakespeare's <laughs> history plays back in 1986. But, um, but that's okay, that's okay. <laughs> I've, I've let that go now, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I am, of course, also indebted to the University of Bristol for the education I received here, not just the lectures and the tutorials and the guidance, but education in its broadest sense. I'm grateful for the ideas I was exposed to here, the art and books and films, the plays and music that I might never have come across by myself, debates I was encouraged and obliged to take part in. At an event like this, I'm also reminded of a particular debt I owe to the friends I made here, people who continue to be my best friends, the ones I feel confident I'll know for the rest of my life, and I'm sure that as you look around you today, you'll feel the same way and will hold these people dear. But finally, more selfishly, I'm grateful that my time here provided the inspiration for so much of my writing. When writers take on their first novel, they inevitably turn to the central event of their lives, and Start of a Ten was my attempt to capture what it felt like to arrive here in 1985, it was a catalogue, really, of the errors of judgment, of the gaucheness and awkwardness, the affectations and pretensions and self-consciousness, because my nostalgia for this time and place is inevitably shot through with some embarrassment and regret. Why did I say those things? What was I thinking? What was I wearing? <laughs> Accompanied by an acknowledgement that our mistakes and our missteps and our failures, however painful in retrospect, are part of the experience and form us just as much, perhaps even more, than our successes. If Start of a Ten was about what it felt like to arrive, the third book one day took as its starting point what it felt like on this day and what it felt like to leave. In the opening chapter, Emma lies awake and worries about what lies in store, independent adult life. She didn't feel like an adult. She was in no way prepared. It was as if a fire alarm had gone off in the middle of the night and she was standing on the street with her clothes bundled up in her arms if she wasn't learning, what was she doing? How would she fill all those days? It was that excitement laced with anxiety that I felt on a day just like this more than a quarter of a century ago. And the world you're graduating into today seems, if anything, even more uncertain and daunting. I'm not sure I can say anything to calm that sense of trepidation, or if I'd want to. When I told my friend that I was going to be doing this today, she said I was going to have to deliver a sermon and not to worry because everyone has at least one sermon in them. Uh, thankfully for you, I think I might be the exception to that rule because I don't really feel wise enough to offer up a philosophy of life and neither would I expect anyone to take it on. Any thoughts I've had, I've put into my work and even the most traditional, conventional piece of inspirational advice that you should go out and seize the day doesn't ring true because I, I think it's fine to let the next few days at least pass unseized. <laughs> so instead, I'll simply congratulate you and hope that you're proud of your achievements and wish you all well in whatever comes next. I hope you feel confident enough to pursue your highest ambitions, however unattainable they may sometimes seem, and I hope that the friendships you've made here prove to be abiding and that you'll look after each other as you fill the days to come. And with that, all remains for me to say, Thank you once again. This really is a huge, huge honor for me. Thank you very much.